Assalamualaikum. Hari ini kita akan teruskan uh, chapter 2. Okay, 2.1 is about operating system user view. Okay, so previously in chapter 1, kita dah lihat uh, the history of operating system, the component and function of operating system and then the uh, booting and then booting concept in operating system. Okay, so sebentar. Alright. So hari ini kita dah masuk topik 2 uh, iaitu melibatkan uh, operating system user view. Untuk topik 2 kita ada dua uh, subtopik iaitu 2.1 is about user view and 2.2 is about file system. So untuk uh, untuk kali ini kita akan lihat user view. By the end of this chapter Please make sure you be able to identify uh, the three uh, types of user interfaces. Okay, so kita akan lihat apa itu ketiga-tiga ni. Okay, these are the types of operating system user interfaces. Okay, the user interfaces is a program or set of program that sit as a layer above the operating system itself. So as we mentioned in our chapter one, okay, the upper layer is the application layer which is the user be able to execute the application so how how come a user can execute the application ataupun uh, the program so iaitu dengan menggunakan kita panggil user interface so kita ada tiga types of three types of user interface which is the first one is GUI graphical user interface seperti yang uh, a today's operating system yang ada icon, ada logo uh, okay. and then kita ada batch system apa batch uh, script uh, user interface di mana kita boleh create a script awal-awal and then execute at a particular time and then kita, the third one is kita ada command line iaitu uh, kita panggil CLI okay, command line interface CLI so yang command line interface ni biasa kita pakai command prompt eh kalau kat Windows. So uh, whenever we we try to open up uh, a program atau to want to execute to access a program. So apa yang berlaku ialah uh, kita try untuk communicate dengan operating system eh the operating system iaitu uh, sama ada Process management, device management, file management, network management ataupun memory management melalui kita panggil system call. So whatever um, whatever execution ataupun command yang kita nak buat, kita system call akan membantu untuk trigger ataupun uh, buat uh, calling kepada one of the system uh, resources kita kat sini. For example, bila kita nak open up a system, sorry, open up an application, the system call yang terdapat di dalam kernel ni, ataupun uh, siapa yang run the system call yang kita dah belajar is the kernel, betul tak? Okay, so kernel ni akan uh, trigger ataupun dia akan call, okay, user nak buat, nak buka op application, Microsoft Word, so berapa resource allocation diperlukan? macam tu okey so kat situ siapa yang uh, akan buat calling ataupun manage the process is kernel ataupun the system call macam tu eh so dibayangkan kalau kita tak ada user interface ataupun uh, then macam mana kita nak bagi command betul tak eh macam mana kita nak okey create a file create a folder okey open up a file make installation okey so itu semua kita melalui user interface okey so Kalau kita tengok sekarang uh, user interface kita semakin lama semakin simple eh. Okay, uh, dan kita dah ada mobile apps, user interface, okay, semua ni dah icon. Okay, sekarang ni uh, command ataupun uh, instruction tu boleh diberi dalam bentuk voice. Okay, dalam bentuk voice. So, tu nanti kita akan lihat. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, uh, itu sebaik sikit berkaitan dengan user interface. Okay. So, when kita lihat uh, the first type of user interface, which is common line interface, okay, ataupun kita panggil sebagai CLI. CLI, kalau dekat 
Windows uh, yang seperti yang uh, dekat lab session kita uh, bagi man, uh, bagi yang sudah uh, buat lab session uh, kita perlu kalau dekat Windows kita perlu buka CMD ataupun common form and then dekat situ kita boleh type help untuk lihat kesemua komen-komen uh, yang ada and then uh, kita boleh create folder okay, dengan uh, just typing md ok mac sorry uh, ya yeah, md untuk make directory and then kita boleh type cd untuk access directory kita boleh list kita boleh delete directory kita boleh open up a file kita boleh create a file so tu dia eh maksudnya dekat sini kalau Bayangkan kalau G, uh, tak ada icon, tak tak ada desktop, actually kita perlu, okay, kita boleh uh, buka CMD and then kita boleh create folder, create file that open up a file. Kita boleh copy, kita boleh restart, kita boleh shut down. So, dengan hanya command line interface saja, kita boleh buat uh, kebanyakan yang kita buat dengan GUI. Okay, so antaranya kita dah buat dekat lab. Eh. Okay, so dia. It's the type command to uh, it's the typing commands to perform specific tasks. Okay. For example, what, what kind of task? Creating a folder. Dalam folder kita boleh create another folder dan kita boleh create file dan kita boleh delete file. Okay. For example, dalam uh, Unix kita ada C shell, Bash shell and then tapi dalam Windows kita panggil MS DOS. Okay. Dalam Linux kita panggil console. Be kurang. Okay. Okay, the second one is graphical user interface. So, ini semua orang tahu. It's very easy to understand, learn and use. It, we can drag and drop. It's an icon base. Okay, tapi bear in mind compared to uh, command line tadi tu. Um, GUI, dia memerlukan processor time and memory. For example, kalau you perasan, kalau you terlalu banyak icon dekat desktop you, you akan, bila you tekan refresh pun, F5, dia akan... Sometimes dia akan take time untuk refresh macam tu eh. Lagi-lagi kalau you buat uh, desktop background, you letak, you download gambar yang high resolution eh. Gambar yang satu gambar sampai 10 meg. And then you jadikan sebagai desktop background you. Then itu akan makan memory for your desktop. So dia akan melembabkan sedikit lah komputer kita. So itu maksudnya dengan uh, you, you need to consider process time and memory. User can run multiple program at one, each in separate windows, okay, you boleh buka beberapa tab, beberapa windows, okay, multitasking, okay, sometimes called as object-oriented or icon-based interface, okay, um, boleh keluar dalam uh, MCQ, okay, uh, okay, GUI also known as, uh, macam tu, okay, so tu dia, GUI also known as icon-based interface, macam tu. Okay, so bear in mind dengan soalan. And then, um, so nowadays, Windows of course ada. Eh, Unix and Linux, okay, dulu dulu tak ada. Tapi since, uh, tapi lama dah ada eh. Uh, contoh masa zaman uh, 2005 lagi, okay, kita dah main Ubuntu, kita dah main Dogpick. Dan you punya, dia punya UI pun dah cantik uh, tentu, lebih cantik dari Windows. Time Windows keluar XP, kami dah main Ubuntu which is Ubuntu time tu, UI dia dah macam Windows Vista. Uh, so, dia two step ahead. Okay. Uh, one step ahead atau two step ahead uh, dari segi GUI dia. Eh. Sebenarnya Linux ni. Okay, Linux. Okay. And then, kita ada Apple Macintosh lah. Eh. Apple Macintosh yang seperti ini. And then, the icons and menus compared to CMD, tiada icons and menus. Kita kita nak tahu menu yang ada atau nak tahu komen yang ada, kita type help. Barulah dia keluar. Eh, itu pun background. Eh. Background dia, um, apa dia dalam bentuk listing, eh, komen dia. Menu interface about memorizing and typing common names. Okay. So, kalau guna, menggunakan CLI, ada probability untuk kita type komen yang salah, panjang dan sebagainya. But, uh, dengan ada menu dan icon, dia senang untuk kita memorize dan memudahkan kerja. Contoh, nak buka Word. Okay, nak buka Word. Adakah kita akan terbuka PowerPoint? Jarang sekali sebab kita dah, by default kita dah tahu uh, logo Word macam mana dan logo PowerPoint macam mana. So, tu dimasukkan dengan avoiding memorizing. So, dia tak perlu nak mengingat eh macam command line. Command line nak buka Word, kita kena masuk access, kita kena access kepada folder. 
Kita kena type eh, kita kena listkan dalam folder tu ada apa dan kita kena type nama fail tu. Okay, okay. A dialog is a special window that appears when a program or the OS need more information before completing a task. Dalam command line, biasa apa yang kita buat, kita terus tekan enter, eh, kita bagi instruction, kita tekan enter. And then, dia akan tengoklah jadi ke tak jadi. Tapi, kalau dalam Windows, ada GUI, sometimes bila kita nak buat deletion, contohnya, eh, kadang-kadang dia akan pop up, keluar, eh, uh, message pop. So, tu dia, sebaik sikit, kan, eh? graphical user interface. So, mari kita lihat contoh graphical user interface. This is Macintosh. Okay, kalau kita tengok Macintosh. Okay, menu dekat bawah and then bila kita, kita klik belah sini and then dia akan keluar belah kanan. Kanan eh, dia nampaklah ada punya structure. Okay, okay. Folder ni dekat mana? Oh, folder ni daripada sini. Favorite ni daripada dia. Favorite daripada library. So, itu dia punya UI, punya structure. Apa yang Apple sudah fikirkan. Okay. Okay, berbanding dengan Linux atau Apple, uh, Linux atau Windows, okay, so dia seperti yang biasa kita guna lah. Okay, TLI versus UI, okay, okay, this part uh, can be included in part C, and then we can ask you for the different, the, what is our uh, explain the difference between CLI and GUI. We can give you ten marks for this. And then please don't just uh, write the keyword memorization easy. Uh, and then uh, you can explain each of the, the, the key point. The key point is here, is of use. Okay, so kita tengok command line compared to GUI. Siapa yang lebih mudah digunakan? Tendeng jawapannya GUI. Eh? Easy for the user. More user friendly. Of course lah, is of use. Kalau CLI, you kena memorize command. Okay, jenis yang suka main teknikal, dia sukalah uh, memorize command eh. Uh, okay, nak IP config macam mana, nak refresh network macam mana. Okay, so uh, make diet tree, then this ke command and then dia boleh main dengan begitu lancar. But some people anggap nak hafal command tu, payah benar eh. Nak hafal MD, make diet tree pun susah. Tu, tu dia macam tu. So, people need to memorization eh. Family, family are needed to operate the command line interface. User find much more difficult to use, successful navigate and operate a command line interface. Okay, lagi satu kalau kita nak cari file atau folder, hmm, memang mencari-cari lah kita eh. Kita klik kat C, masuk folder ni, ah, macam tu. Okay. Okay, so tu dia. The first one is ease of use. The second one is the control. So, uh, the control user. In CLI, users have much more control and option of their file system and operating system. Apa maksudnya? For example, user can easily copy to a specific type of file from one location to another another one location. Control uh, dari segi um, uh, copy eh, file, eh, the, nak copy file. Senang ke tak? Yang tu memang agak senang lah. You just macam you ambil, add, ambil file, file tu punya URL and then you just those copy. Yes, contohnya kat sini, copy, command dia copy, command dia copy, C, DOS ni dia punya folder, edit HRP this file yang kita nak copy, and then kita terus copy yang ini kepada yang ini, C, food, and then dia akan terus masuk. So, kalau dalam GUI, you copy and then you kena back and then cari folder mana you nak, copy tadi, betul lah eh, contoh daripada C, you nak pergi kat D lah, kena pergi ke this PC, cari D pula macam tu kan, so tu dia dari segi, dari segi, dari segi situ yes uh, command line menang lah ok, oh, although the GUI offers plenty of control of file system operating system, often advanced user user will need to do specific time may need to resort to a command line to complete a particular task, ok so dia control, siapa yang menang yang lain menang, ok Multitasking agak agak siapa? Confirm lah, GUI. Okay, macam kita dah tengok tadi, GUI enable multiple tab, multiple process open at a one time. Kita boleh buka uh, browser at the same time boleh buka uh, Microsoft Word. Betul lah. So, tu maksudnya dengan multitasking. 
Okay, tapi kalau koma lain, hmm, you kena buka lah satu-satu kan. Buka word dulu, lepas tu pergi kat tempat lain, uh, pergi kat folder lain, okay, cd dot dot, cd dot dot, pergi kat tempat lain, okay. Eh. So, multitasking, GUI. Although many common line environments are capable of multitasking, they do not offer the same ease and ability to view multiple things at one in one screen. Okay, tapi kalau GUI, you boleh dalam satu screen, you boleh tukar-tukar tab. Tukar-tukar tab pun maksudnya, you boleh tekan alternate tab dekat keyboard you, you akan nampak. You boleh pilih kan, sekarang nak buka Word ke, nak, nak buka Microsoft ke, you boleh pilih. Itu maksudnya eh. You boleh buka banyak browser, banyak tab, banyak window lah. CLI tak. You kena fokus kat satu-satu command line eh. Based on my experience. Okay, jarang lah buka beberapa command line <laughs> macam tu eh. Okay. And then appearance. Appearance. CLI usually do not change in their appearance. GUI for particular program tend to change often. Mostly with every major release version. Appearance. Uh, kita punya, ya, rupa betul lah. Daripada, Vis, daripada XP ke Vista ada perubahan tak? Ada. Vista ke 7, hmm, lebih kurang. 7 ke 8 ada perubahan. 8 ke 10 ada perubahan. Betul lah dia punya susunan dan macam tu. Kalau you perasan, kalau you perasan, Windows 10 kalau you tengok um, UI zaman sekarang dia macam simple kan. Boleh slide kiri, kiri dan kanan dia kotak-kotak-kotak macam tu. Sebab design tu kita ambil sleek and sim simple sleek design. Eh? Simple sleek modern design. Okay, sebab apa dia nak cater dengan user yang nak cepat. Nak senang dan nak cepat. Okay, bayangkan kalau you buat bulat-bulat. Uh, dia macam corak-corak. Okay, kalau macam tu kalau dia masuk dekat mobile. Mobile version dia dah macam tak sesuai. Tak nak? Mobile version kita kan kita nak kotak dia and then user nak scroll daripada atas ke bawah macam tu kan so that's why design kita kotak 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 eh? uh, in a box simple macam understand macam tu so appearance juga memainkan peranan uh, mengikut peredaran zaman okey uh, macam tu okey next speed apa lagi speed of course dengan dengan CRI okey memang sangat laju Okay, uh, you tengok dioptik, okay, dia terus keluar macam tu eh. <coughs> so, it's much faster than GUI. GUI, ya, kita ada icon, kita boleh remember sikit, kita punya dekat C ke ada, tapi kita kena banyak navigate dekat sini. Navigate. Uh, so, proses of navigate tu sekadang-kadang macam, aduh, nak kena back, eh, nak check balik folder tu, uh, nak copy kan, uh, memang agak lambat. Excuse me. Next, resources. Resources. Uh, siapa yang banyak, banyak banyak pakai RAM, banyak pakai processor. Okay. Of course, GUI. Eh, sebab GUI tu sini ada warna, sometimes ada icon, ada gambar. So, benda, -benda semua, dia nak kena load. Eh, nak load the icon font and icon and font ni. Okay. And then, dia nak, then dia ada dia punya size. So, dia akan banyak makan uh, sistem resources. Sistem resources kita terdiri daripada lima komponen tu. Processor, RAM, uh, dengan uh, sistem file, hard disk. Okay, so, GUI banyak menggunakan. Dia uh, consume lot of lot more system resources compared to command line. Okay. Uh, with CLI, there is no need to install a graphical layer at all on all onto a computer system which save a lot of resources okay do you, uh do kita nak pakai CRI tak perlu nak install install eh macam macam GUI right yeah Good. a command line interface enable use easily script a sequence of command to perform a task or execute a program okay uh kalau you ada scripting eh macam batch uh, processing you nak buat cron job okay uh you nak even nak buat uh, message ke apa kan uh, so scripting boleh berlaku dekat command line tapi GUI dia dah fix ok you tak boleh nak buat you just uh, run the program yang you dah ada je. macam tu ok remote access siapa yang allow remote access uh, macam tu eh offer man accessing another computer or network device over a network or a user will only be able to manipulate the device and its file using a CLI. 
or uh, compared to although remote graphical access is becoming probably is possible not all computers and especially not all network equipment will have this ability remote access bermaksud daripada satu komputer kita boleh access kita boleh, kita boleh connect kita boleh control another computer tau okey kalau dalam zaman sekarang uh, dulu lah dulu bukan zaman sekarang uh, kita ada remote desktop protocol you boleh search kat you punya PC RDP remote desktop remote desktop di mana bila you, you tekan remote desktop nanti dia akan keluar pop up dia akan minta you masukkan IP address PC yang you nak masuk tu so let's say you nak masukkan dekat PC kawan kamu minta dia punya IP address you masukkan dekat situ and then masukkan dekat situ and then uh, dia akan minta password PC kawan awak tu lah RDP eh ada ke ha, ni ada So, remote desktop. Ini maksudnya remote desktop. So, ini dia remote desktop. Oh, saya boleh demo patutnya. Daripada, daripada tadi komen, uh, uh, daripada tadi CLI tu semua saya boleh demo sini. Okay, contoh you masuk kat sini. Dot, dot, tu, tiga, kosong. So, ini IP address kamu. You nak masuk and then dia akan buat connection and then dia akan, dia akan uh, minta you password. Bila you boleh letak password, You terus boleh jump into dia punya komputer, dia punya komputer. Itu yang dimasukkan dengan dekat sini. Okay. Ha, okay. okay. Ha, so, kalau ada error macam ni, nak buat remote desktop, dua-dua PC kena setting. Buka port 2389. Sini buka port 2389 dekat firewall, sana ke pun kena buka 2389 dekat firewall. Okay, so tu dia. Dua-dua dah buka port, dah dua-dua dah allow remote desktop protocol. Okay, barulah dua-dua boleh buat. Uh, sharing the the desktop macam tu. Other than that, dua-dua kena on dululah komputer tu. Okay, so just tak apa lah. Saya tunjukkan yang kita, kat OS kita ada remote desktop. And then, ini yang dimasukkan dengan remote access. <coughs> Tapi kalau CLI pula, biasa memang kita hacking ke, hack ke, kita bila kita hack satu PC tu, kita akan create, kita panggil session. Session open je. Okay, uh, macam mana cakap eh? You know, bila kita buat hacking, ada satu tools ni namanya Metasploit. Metasploit, the, 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 kita boleh pakai command line. Okay, command line. Kita dah buat scripting-scripting kan, dah run dia punya, dah run dia punya payload semua tu, nanti dia last sekali dia akan buat macam ni. Dekat dalam sistem tu lah, connecting. And then, nanti dia akan klik kat sini, one session open. Sorry. Ha, macam tu. Maksudnya, one session open ni, maksudnya kita dah ada connection ni. Dia dah, hacking tu dah berjaya. Okay. So, bila one session hacker, maksudnya laluan lorong tu dah buat lah. So, bila kita dah, dah, dah dapat one session open ni, bermaksud kita dah berada di punya PC. Dekat situ, bila kita tengok IP, IP address kita, kita berada di IP address orang tu. Sebab kita dah berada di PC dia. So, tu maksudnya dengan connecting by using CLI. Okay. okay, so ini CLI kit ya. yang saya cakap help tadi tu yang ini, kita boleh type help and then kita boleh, kita boleh uh, pergi, pergi tengok uh, directory apa ada dalam C kita, okay, masuk dekat test Azizi, directory dia ada apa, dalam Azizi ada apa, okay, uh, macam tu. Dan kita boleh create directory. Contohnya CSC204 Okay, make directory CSC204 so, so, dalam ni ada CSC204 And then kita boleh create file Okay, kita boleh create file kat sini Then kita type echo Echo is Is my S Okay, buat ni and then test.txt Okay So, dia akan create test.txt di dalam folder ini. So, mari kita lihat. Nanti kita access CSC. Oh, kan. Uh, tak. Dia create test dalam folder ini. So, now kita dah ada test. So, dalam test ni ada apa? Kita buka test. This is my test. Apa yang kita dah buat tadi. So, tu dia. So, ah. Uh, kita boleh buat juga PPT tapi with, with limited with limited capabilities lah ok so tu dia so remote access is about connecting, communicating, accessing the the other PC ok dalam hacking kita 
tak dalam hacking pun kita boleh masuk dalam server kita menggunakan uh, CLI. Okay, otherwise dekat dalam GUI kita boleh guna remote desktop. Alamak, mana tadi? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay, so kita continue. Okay, uh, so tu dia uh, CLI versus UI. Okay, uh, what are the, the the main point? Remote access, scripting, resources, speed, appearance, multitasking, control and ease of use. So ada beberapa kat sini CLI versus UI. And lastly, kita akan lihat um, ini yang saya cakap tadi. Uh, actually, uh, executing a program bukan not necessary. We need to double click the icon. Eh? Nowadays, okay, laptop kita pun kita boleh enable kan voice, handphone kita of course lah voice, TV kita pun voice, voice apa? Voice recognition, speech recognition. So, e, uh, bila kita nak search on something, just kita sebut saja lah. Eh. Uh, kalau dalam, kalau dalam, uh, uh, kalau dalam Windows, eh, sorry, kalau dalam Google, siapa nama dia? Kita just boleh search lah kan. Uh, okay. uh, what is the weather today? Macam tu kan. Right. Uh, so, dia akan cari. What is the weather today in Wau Pahang? Weather please. Uh, macam tu eh. To the degrees in uh, Rob this week. So, suppose the weather, please. What is the weather? How's the traffic right now? Okay, let's say, how's the traffic? Okay, so something like that. So, <coughs> okay, itu kita bagi voice recognition, voice the thing, voice response. Okay, kita, okay, and then uh, dia menggunakan natural language processing. Okay, that require powerful computer with a great deal of memory and fast processor. Okay, so ini in case of kalau dalam PC ataupun sistem, tapi dekat dalam mobile phone kita pun kita boleh implement voice activated interfaces. Okay, so terlalu banyak uh, voice ni pun terlalu banyak nanti kat, kat kelas saya ceritakan sedikit voice marketing. Okay, voice marketing. Macam mana orang jual tudung tu kena pakai voice activation ni. Ha, macam tu. Okay, so itu saja. Uh, nanti saya akan bagi soalan dan minta anda jawab dan beri jawapannya di dalam forum kita nanti. Sekian, terima kasih.